All right, guys, uh, please take a seat. Thank you. For those that don't know me, my name is uh, Mike Rust. Um, I used to be the chief instructor, as Jeff said, at Chatteris for some 16 years. I've been jumping since 1990. I started in uh, at the Wild Geese, and I've just been over there recently as a temporary chief instructor helping out um, until they've sorted themselves out in the new year. So that's that's sort of what I've been up to. Uh, some people may not know, but I was a, a um, load organiser at... Um, Scott of Sebastian for a couple of seasons, and uh, I think some of you, I think Noel has, but he's not here, but he's actually jumped on one of my jumps. I let him go on it because he was good enough at the time. Anyway, um, that's sort of my background. Looking at you guys here, I do know quite a few of you. Um, can you put your hands up if you're not a tandem instructor? We've got a few, but not many, okay. Um, how many people are uh, AFF instructors here? Fair number. And um, CSIs, yeah, and CSBIs, got a few. Okay, so is mainly today is about tandem, that's what we're looking at, but I can include some other bits as well as we go along, so I'll try to include everybody in the talk, because if you're not a tandem instructor, you might get a bit switched off, so we'll see how we go on. Okay, right, so we're gonna talk about, or I'm gonna talk about professional standards and professional judgment, okay? What do I mean by that? Nothing at the moment because I can't get this to work. Is this the right one, Jeff? No. Lovely. That's not on that one. Ah, thank you. Okie doke. Right, so the aim of my uh, lesson today, or my lecture, is to look at what we do and how we act professionally. Um, we're going to be looking at various aspects of what we get up to, and it's really what we do on a day-to-day -day basis that we're looking at. Then we're going to look at professional judgment and uh, we can have a little bit of interaction while that's going on and, and see what's, what I'm talking about. Professional judgment, what does he mean by that? Well, you'll see in a little while. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the definition of what professional is. Um, I thought I knew what it was and I had a look around to see a different definition and this is what I found. Whoops. So a professional is a member of a profession or any person who earns a living from a specified professional activity. So what do we mean by that? Well, we do that, don't we? We are professional people who work in an industry. Whether it's full-time or part-time, we make our living from instructing. So once you take that money, you become a professional. Um, so has anybody got a problem with earning money from skydiving? No. Okay, and if you do a lot of tandems in a day, you earn that money, don't you? You know that after that 10 day or day of 10 tandems, by the end of it, you're tired, you've earned that money. So there's no problem with earning money from skydiving. Years ago, when we uh, used to train students at the weekends uh, on round courses, many, many years ago, um, we did the whole weekend and we got a bit of uh, bunts, a little bit of money to go to the pub afterwards. That was great. But nowadays we really work for that money and we should be paid. So don't worry if you do. Um, don't think it's a bad thing getting paid for what you do. You deserve it. Right, the term also describes the standards of education and training that prepare members of the profession with a particular knowledge and skills necessary to perform that particular skill within that professional, skills within that professional. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we have to have certain standards. So before we become an instructor, um, we have to go on a BI course. We've all been on that course. I thought it was fantastic, the first one I went on, and I think that was in 1996. Anyway, um, we have to become a BI before we're allowed to go on to one of the other areas that we're interested in. You can these days just become a tandem instructor, you can get a TBI, and then you can become a tandem instructor. But when I started, unfortunately, you couldn't do that. You had to become a CSBI, CSI, and then I think it was two years before you were allowed to go on a tandem course, and the same if you wanted to become an AFF instructor. You had to go through that sort of system. But then we realised after a few years that that wasn't really what we needed to do in the modern world. We needed more and more tandem instructors, so we allowed you to go through that route. But we do that. Um, we're allowed to do it. Who, who governs us? Who lets us do that? British skydiving. OK, we can only be qualified by British skydiving in this country. British skydiving has the rights to look after skydiving. It governs the sport and it's allowed to do that by the CA. It, it's given that um, 
platform to do that on. So that's how we get qualified. Okay, when I put this slide up, I originally wrote cont with a couple of lines on it, but my wife said, no, you better put continued, it will look better. <laughs> that's what I did. Okay, most professionals are subject to strict codes of conduct enshrining rigorous ethical and moral obligations. Okay, so we do have um, a code of conduct. That's our code of conduct. I guess everybody here is familiar with that. And at a lot of centres, we ask people to make sure that they're familiar with it by signing to say, yeah, I've read it and I know what it involves. What it actually involves is the rights and relationships and responsibilities of both the instructor and it talks about relationships with our students. So we have to be very careful how we deal with people. When we do a tandem with them, they tend to put us on a big pedestal. So that, oh, he's the man, he's a great chap and all the rest of it. But we have to be careful how we look after those students. We have, can't take advantage of that situation. It has been done and it's not right. We have to treat everybody the same. Okay, the next bit. Professional standards of practice and ethics for a particular field are typically agreed upon and maintained through a wide recognised professional association. So that's where British Skydiving come in, okay? They look after us by providing us with insurance at a very good price. If you're an instructor, you get a great price. If you're a jumper that just does one or two jumps a year, it's expensive. You know, your BPA membership, I don't know what the latest cost is. Can anybody tell me? 100 pounds, 102, something like that for last year. Yeah, pretty good. But if you're um, a chief instructor, that's excellent value because you get all of your professional indemnity insurance for that same price as someone who does one or two jumps a year. So we get that through British Skydiving. Um, they organise all the courses. Jeff organises the courses. He's the man. Um, they make sure that we can go on them. We can get uh, authorised, certificated to do what we want to do within the, within the association. So British Skydiving are there to um, back up the instructors. I'd say with all of the things we've looked at there, we are definitely professionals. There's no doubt about it. Okay. So, what does being a professional mean? What does it mean to us in our daily lives as instructors or part-time instructors? Now, what I'd like to do at this point is get your input because I haven't heard much from you guys. We've heard a lot from uh, Noel, I've heard a lot from Jeff, but I've not heard a lot from you guys yet. So I'd like to uh, borrow my lovely attractive assistant, Yo Lee. Now, I haven't just chosen her because um, She's a girl, it's not to do with that. It's to do with the fact that she used to be a school teacher and she's good at writing. <laughs> so we're gonna get her to write things out. So if you could um, give us some ideas on what we need to do as a professional. So is that working, Jeff? Can we have that on, please? No, that's good, that's fine, I can read it. Can you see that at the back, Kev? With your, with your glasses on, okay. So can anybody give me um, an idea of what we should do as a professional. What, what was expected of us? Just some ideas. Neil? <laughs> You've been given that. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, Ru Rudy come up one. So pass the old uh, mic over to Rudy. Okay, so Rudy's got one. Yeah, subject, your subject knowledge. Right. So you need to have a okay. deep understanding of what you're actually putting, trying to put across. Yeah, okay. So you need to have knowledge. Yeah, that's what you're saying, and um, you need to know the subject you're doing. So if you're doing tandem, obviously you need to know about that. You need to be qualified to do it as well, for sure. Yeah. Oh, Neil's got one now, has he? You, you need you need to treat whoever you're instructing equally. You can't. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Just respect. Yeah, respect. You know. So treat them with respect. Doesn't matter yeah. who it is, does it? No. no? It might, it might be someone that you don't like the look of person, and you think, oh, you know, looks a bit odd, whatever. We've all got unconscious bias, which is within us. We can't help that. But we need to treat these people the same. They're all paying the same sort of money. You know, Tandem Skydive, I don't know how much it is at your centre, but it's usually about £250 plus. There's a lot of money. We don't have to take these people home to eat our dinner at the night, do we? We'd have to invite them out. But what we do need to do is treat them with respect and look after them. They're all paying the same. I see it where, you know, someone's, one of the mates has got a, a pretty girl and he's chatting away to her and that's great. And then another guy's got this great big guy and he's sitting there, you know, he's not saying anything to him. It's not fair, you know. Um, we just have to take who we get and we have to treat them all the same. Spend a little bit of time with them after the jump as well. 
How did you enjoy that? Is it all good? Yeah. You haven't got to, again, you haven't got to take them home for tea, but just spend a little bit of time with them. So they go away thinking, what a good bloke. I really enjoyed his company. And that's it. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, any, anything else that we Maintain need to do? Maintain high standards. Maintain a high standard. Yeah. So what do you mean by that, Dane? What do you mean by? Well, be, be the best you can and, and always look to improve. Yeah. And, and, and revise whatever you need to do. I know we do it now on a monthly basis, but you, yep. know, you should be thinking about that every time you go there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we're always we're always looking to improve all the time. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Okay. Anything else? Any... Sorry, I'll come back to you, Steve. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So people make an impression of you very quickly, don't they? They meet you and within a minute and a half they've decided if they like you or not really. But if if you if you don't look the part, if you look like you just got out of bed, you know, your hair's all over the place if you got any still. Um, if you look like you haven't washed, you, you just knock the part, then immediately they're like, oh, hold well on. You know, but if you, if you look the part, you might not even be a tandem instructor, you might be the guy who cleans the toilets, but if you look right, then pretty much they have the confidence just straight away. Is that what you meant, really? Yeah? Okay, cool. Cheers for that, Steve. Okay, anything else? Sure. Yeah, Dr. John. Sorry, I'll come back to you. Have, have your standards and behaviour assessed by others, not by the tradesmen, would you? Yep. Okay, I agree with that. Um, we do actually do that in a way because we are signed up on a yearly basis. So the chief instructor has to sign to say that we're current and that we are we are doing our job correctly. Because if not, we can't get that sign up on a yearly basis. Is that what you kind of meant, or? Uh, probably for tandem instructors, make sure someone else regularly looks at your videos to see if anything can be improved. Yeah, I know that a lot of uh, centres with the SMS system have uh, chief instructors looking at do, whether they're doing the drills, looking at landings, and that sort of thing. Um, but we also have the 60 day, or sorry, there used to be 60 day. We now do it on a calendar monthly drills um, to make sure we are current on what we're doing. So there is, there is that ongoing. But I quite agree, yeah. That other, other, your peers can look at what you're doing as well. And we'll, we'll look at that in a, in a second as well. Sorry, back to yourself. Yeah, uh, safety conscious, but that goes in hand in hand with high standards anyway. If you're keeping your standards up, then you should be safety yeah, conscious anyway. Yeah, but it's one of the. Uh, the things that we should do as an instructor, isn't it? It's one of those things that we've got on the list. Safety conscious comes really high up that one as well, doesn't it? So, yeah, good point. Um, to regulations. It's sorry? Baseline. It's your starting point. Sorry, can you? Adhering to regulations. Adhering to regulations, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have to adhere to regulations ourselves, um, but it also is down to our chief instructor to make sure that we're doing that, yeah. Sorry, Ryan. Yeah, yeah provide the best possible service you can to your customers. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we're giving them a service, aren't we? We're trying to make sure that they get everything right. It's not um, us as tandem instructors versus the cameraman. We're working together as a team to ensure that at the end of the day, they go back with the product that they, they thought they'd bought in the first place. Was that what you meant, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, cheers. Yes, Neil? Uh, learn, learn when to say no. You know, like if you've been jumping all day, you're tired, and you know you're, you've hit your limits, just do a right stop, that's me jump for the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, another, another jump. Yeah. And then maybe something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for it. those of you who didn't hear it at the back, what he's saying is um, if you're feeling tired at the end of the day, don't take on that extra tan. And there's always someone who's greedy there, isn't it, that will do that extra one. You know, I'll do it, I'll take it. Um, you know, you're feeling a bit jaded, you've had a long, busy day, and you're thinking, oh, I don't really want to do that last one. It might be something telling you that actually you're really too tired, you're not going to flare properly or whatever. So, yes, if you're feeling like that, then it's time for you to say, actually, you know what, can I not do that last one? Yeah, good point. Okay. Uh, we've got a good old list there, haven't we, Joe? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, anything else? Anybody got any anything urgent they'd like to put down? High ethical, ethical and moral standards. Ethical and moral standards? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So like you said before, you've got to treat everybody the same. You've yep. got to be polite. Uh, yeah. You know, completely open mind. Yeah. And there's different ways of teaching different people. Because yep. they've got different needs, they may have different issues. So you've got to make sure it's, once again, a sort of knowledge of the, of your clientele. So you're using your human factor then, aren't you, to make sure that you're dealing with that person individually and not just treating them like everybody else because they may learn in a different way or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Cheers, Dane. Right, um, if there's no other burning ones, I'm going to go into the list that I put. Thanks very much, Joe. That's great. Thank you very much.
So we're now going to put the ones that I thought of before I started this and see if they kind of match up with yours. So the first one, present yourself in a clean and tidy manner. I think that's what Steve was saying to start with. Um, yeah, make sure you, you look good. You've, had, you've been washed, you, you, you know, you're ready to go, basically. Wearing uniform, if uniform's provided by the centre, please wear it. You know, people go, oh, I don't particularly like this one. It's a bit sweaty in the summer or whatever. But, you know, the, the centre has paid out money to make you look good. And you look part of the staff, you look right. So if, if you are going to, if you're given uniform, I think you should wear it. However, if you haven't got uniform at your centre, not everybody does, nice clean jumpsuit. You know, if it looks, if it looks like it's just been landed on 10 times, you know, over the last 10 weeks, it smells a little bit. It's not really what we're trying to do, is it? So clean and tidy jumpsuit. And I've put, or similar, because not everybody wears a jumpsuit these days. Sometimes I wear the free five pants. But, you know, make them look good. You know, if they've got the hole in the backside and that, after a little while, you can get some patches, make yourself look good. Okay, are you fit to work? Are you not, you know, you're a bit hungover, a bit jaded? That's not really what we're trying to do, is it? You know, back when I first started jumping, we used to have... Um, Loads we could book on in the morning. It was an eight quid jump or something. Do the hangover load, they called it. You know, um, I'm not naming the, the drop zone where I used to do that. But um, we could do that sort of thing because there wasn't many people about doing tandems. There was the odd one who'd turn up and we'd all go and shake the hands because it, it was a bit of a novelty. You know, two or three tandems a weekend on a Saturday was a busy day. But now we've got loads of them. We've got to be fit to work. We've got to look the part and we've, we've got to be right for it. So let's make sure we are. Okay, the next one, are we physically fit enough? Now, I know young Dane Kenny here um, is getting on, but he's probably one of the fittest people in the room because he looks after himself. He keeps his, his, keeps his physique in order. He's fit to do the job. Now, most of us, when we were younger, probably were fitter than we are now. Um, but as you get older, it's important that you keep up those standards. You must do something if you're going to be a tandem instructor long term. Um, we've all probably put a bit more weight on than we'd like to. We haven't done as much as we wanted to. Think about your own uh, physical limits, what you can do. If, if you're honest with yourself, if you're not quite fit enough, do a little regime, do something, do a run, do some cycling, uh, go to the gym, whatever turns you, you on to do that, that thing. But you must keep yourself physically fit. It's very important. If you're physically fit, you're less likely to hurt your student on a bad landing. You're gonna be better at flaring. You're gonna be fitter during the day. And as Neil was talking about, you're probably not going to be as jaded at the end of it. So I think physical fitness is important and we tend to overlook it. We look at the equipment and all the stuff that we do, but physical fitness is really important, especially if we're doing tandem all day. Okay, next one, maintain your own currency, documentation, medical, etc. Don't rely on your chief instructor to say, oh, by the way, your drills are out, or by the way, your medical's due. You know, if your medical's due, and I know um, there's a particular problem out in Northern Ireland at the moment where Trying to get hold of someone to do your medical is quite difficult. It's all right for Rudy because in the military he's got someone to do it for him. But nearly everybody else is struggling there. And I know one of the, one of the instructors when I was out there um, couldn't get his medical on time because they were well booked up because of COVID and things. It had got a bit of a backlog. So make sure you book it in early. Make sure that your drills are in, in, in order. Make sure your membership's due. How many times do we get it where the, the BS membership is due on the 31st of March, the 1st of April, ready to go, and people haven't done it. It's like if you're, if you're a professional and you're doing that all the time, get it done early. You know, do it a month early. It doesn't make any difference really, does it, whether you pay for it one month or the next month. If you do it at the same time every year, but don't leave it to the last minute and then your chief instructor saying, can you fill it out? Can you do it? You know, it's a pain. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. You might miss some jumping because of it. Get your membership done early, please. Okay. Um, use appropriate language at all times. I don't think we had that one on there, but language is important. We often say things to each other, which we think don't really affect people, but people from outside who view us for the first time, they will pick up on it. It's very easy to say things to another instructor. We know what we're talking about, but they don't, and they might pick it up on it and, and things can go off. And uh, Flo, we had a bit of a situation, didn't we, a couple of years ago where it went off um, in the in the minibus just because of a little chance remark someone said something and it was taken the wrong way by a student yeah you know what I mean and um, it didn't go down well did it <laughs> so be very very careful what you say in front of students because these people are not they're not skydivers they don't know our banter they don't know our humor they don't get it always so just be careful what you say in front of others please 
Okay, um, I think someone's already mentioned that, but always be polite and courteous with your, with your student and spend time with them when you can. Like after the jump, I like it at, at uh, Wild Geese. They spend a little bit of time, they, they do pictures with them in front of a, um, a sign, yeah, and it looks good. It's really good. It means that those people feel special. They've come along, they've done their jump, they've paid a load of money, but at the end of their day, they feel special when they go home. And that's really what it's all about. That, that's the market we're in. As tandem instructors, that's what we're doing. If we're nice to them, hopefully they'll bring some more mates back to do some more and we can earn some more money from it. So it's in our, our interest to really look after people and go that extra half mile that we need to just to keep them happy. Okay, and above all, and I think Dave mentioned it at the end there, please act in a professional manner at all times. Very, very important. Now, a lot of you guys here, I'm probably preaching to the converted, but it may be that some of the people that need to listen to this haven't arrived today. But as, you know, the more senior people here, please take these ideas back and pick others up on it. If, if your mate's saying something and you think, oh, that was a bit out of order, pick him up on it, call him out. Do you think that was appropriate? Probably not. So just be aware of it, please. Okay, right, so that's, that's covered what being professional means to us. And now we're going to move on to a little bit of learning and development. And I think this is where Dame was talking about. So we should always aim to improve and develop at all times. Okay. Strive to be more proficient at our craft. So what I mean by that is, if you're a fairly new tandem instructor and you're struggling with your exits or your landings or any, anything that you're doing, Look at other people. How do you do it? Look at the guys who land really well every time. Why do they land well every time? Why do they land well every time? Is it because they're, they're better at flaring at you? Are they stronger than you? Or is it just the technique that they use? Because when we hurt people, when we're looking at the statistics, we're looking at how people get hurt, and it generally is on landing. The air doesn't hurt us, does it? But the ground does. So it's important that you get your flare right and make sure that you land well. For yourself as well. We don't want to be injured, do we? If we're out, if I'm injured, that's it, I'll probably give up. But if we get to some of you younger guys, if you're injured, you're going to have three months out at least. And that means a loss of earnings, all right? So it's important that you strive to become better at what you do. Now, this isn't just for people who do tandems. It's also for those that are CSIs. If you're a CSI and you haven't been in the classroom for a while, you might want to get back in there. You might want to sit in on a couple of lessons just to refresh yourself. Keep current, keep your skills going, keep at it. AFF, you know, we haven't jumped for a little while. Do I need to go to the tunnel? Do I need to do some other jumping before I get stuck into AFF? First level back, haven't jumped for three months. You're doing level four. Oh, brilliant. Okay, here we go. Um, happy days. But we need to make sure we're current. We need to make sure that we look after ourselves. There's ways of doing it. Um, and that's what we're talking about. Be proficient at your craft. Get as good as you can at it. Next thing, possibly learn a new skill. Now, if you're a 25-year-old tandem instructor and you tend to do that, you want to do that until you're 60-odd, fantastic, but it could be a little bit boring. Once you get 10 years in, 20 years in, and you're still just doing bashing out 10 tandems a day, life's going to be a bit, bit boring, I suggest. However, you can look at other skills. You can become an AFF instructor. If you don't do that, you can become a CSI. I know Neil at the moment is working towards his. He's going on a course very shortly, and hopefully it'll be, it'll be successful. But he's not just gone, oh, well, I'm a tandem instructor, that's it. He's going to do that. I know Flo at the back is looking to do his AFF, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to help him a little bit with that this year. So, you know, everybody should look to do other skills. If not, perhaps some coaching. Is there something you're keen on? You know, when we started this sport, we didn't start it because we wanted to become a tandem instructor and do that all day, did we? We did it because we loved it. We wanted to do different things. We like jumping with our mates and the rest of it. So bring that little bit of enthusiasm back if you can. Learn a new skill. Um, try and improve and develop yourself. Right, so just at the end there, we can always learn and we shouldn't stop learning. The day we think we know it all is the day we're probably going to not make it. So you can always learn something. Little thing I was taught years ago was that you were given two ears and one mouth. So I always try and use them in that proportion. Listen lots, talk a little. It will serve me well. You know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> Laughing away there, good. Okay, right. Next thing I'm going to look at is professional judgment, all right? And you might be thinking, what the hell is he on about here? Well, this next slide might just sort of um, give you a better idea what I'm looking at. 
Okay, so that's the elephant in the room, that's not me. Um, and what I mean by that, can you give us a B there, Jeff, please? Can you give us a B? Hey, Raj. Okay, so what I mean by um, that is, you're the tandem instructor, you're sitting there on the drop zone and you're told, yeah, you're taking Jeff next, not that Jeff. Um, and Jeff walks around the corner and he's a giant and you're like, oh, right, okay, fantastic, okay. And Jeff looks a bit overweight. He looks to me like Jeff's, hmm, he's gone at 18 stone and our limit is 15, so what do you do about it? You know, and if you haven't had that situation, you haven't done many tandems. Or you might think, oh, Jeff's got, Jeff's got flow, that's great. Thank God for that, because it's not, he's not mine. I haven't got to look after Jeff today. But is that right? Is that right that we're thinking like that? How did Jeff get through the system? How did he manage to book in at that weight? How did he get through the system? So whose fault is it? It's not our fault. We just come along to jump with this nice chap and we just realise that actually he's a little bit over our weight limit and we won't be able to do it. So who's actually done that? First look. Sorry? The first look, whoever sees him, the first point of that day. Yeah. Like reception or anybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the first person to actually see him should say, hold on, let's get you on the scales or whatever, yeah. But it, but it starts before that, doesn't it? It starts when they're recruited. So who's recruited them and not told them that there's a weight well, limit? it depends because they may have just put it down as an as a online book in a form and it goes through and it actually says, you know, it's got the BMI, it's got the weight because we've had it where they turn up and we have to say, look, to put them on the scale, look, I'm sorry, you're overweight. In a polite way, you need to go back, you need to lose this weight, and that's where it should end. Not, I know what you're saying, when they suddenly turn up to us and then we have to go and say, look, I, I need to go and speak to the chief instructor. Yeah, we have to be the bad guy. Yeah, they okay. They lie, don't they? They do <laughs> not rely. We, we yeah. have of course. Of course. Yeah. Thinking they're not going to okay. wage. Yeah, and, uh, but, but if, if that's the case, we need to feed that back, don't we? Hmm. You know, it, yeah. might, it might be that a certain agency keeps sending people that are the wrong weights. So if that's the case, we need our chief instructor to speak to whoever does the admin, you know, in the office or whatever, to speak to that agency and say, you've got to stop booking these people in at these weights. So there's, there's going to be someone that has booked them in too much. I would say, yeah, you're right, that some people just turn up and they're not aware of it. But I think generally, in all the paperwork that goes out, it's we do have weights. It all says now that you have yeah. to be a certain yeah. weight. Yeah, yeah it does, point. it does, you know. But so, still, like Billy said, they turn up. Yeah. And they lie, and, he, and even know. when you put them on the scale, they said that scale's wrong, and yeah. I said, I'm sorry, mate, it's no. not. But if our paperwork is good, then we can cover that, can't we, and oh, say, well, that, yeah. sorry about that, but it does actually say that. Yeah. We've yeah. even had people with the age sign turn up, and they're like 60-odd, and it says 55, and they say, well, I yeah. don't see that. And they've even tried to lie on their age. Yeah, of course. Well, we're, we're going to get that, but at the end of the day, it's up to us guys, you know, to say, no, I'm not taking mm -hmm. that person. Yeah. You've got to be brave about it. It's not an easy thing to do. Now, all of the guys here who have been chief instructors know what I'm talking about because you're having to be the nasty person that said, I'm really sorry, but we can't take you today, and these are the reasons why. You know, but it's also down to all the staff and all the, all the um, instructors to say, actually, no. Because if we get enough no's, eventually it's going to get fed back to the agency, isn't it? Mm. That's going to say, actually, yeah, we've got to be careful here because they've sent, because they're going to get the complaints at the end of the day. We might get someone I rated the, on the day. But they're going to then, you know, think about it and get hold of that agent and say, why did you let me go? Or, was, you know, if their paperwork's not right. If, if you say they're, they're lying or the rest of it, um, they're over the weight on the paperwork, well, that's fine, we can cover that. But we, it may be that there's a little chink somewhere that we need to be looking at. Now, this isn't just for tandem, it's also for, like, AFF and that sort of thing, CSI, CSIs. Um, if someone's on the course and they are not performing properly with their drills, etc., what do we do? Do we just say, oh, you can jump anyway? No. no, we should never do that, should we? We should stop them. It may be that they need, you know, they don't learn. As Dane was saying earlier, the human factor is that they're, they're a slow learner. They need to be taken aside and done some extra drills with, yeah? But at the end of the day, not everybody who comes on a course is suitable to go skydiving. And we have to be brave and stand up and say, actually, no, you're not jumping. If they're, say, on an AFF course or they want to come and uh, become a, a category system student and we deem it that they're not suitable, we may say, actually, you could now go on a tandem because it may be something they can cope with. But if, hand on heart, we don't think that that person can do drills under pressure, we should not let them jump. And we can be 
that link in the chain that actually says no. It's not nice saying no. I know, I know again, going to the chief instructor guys here, that it's not a nice thing to do, is it? It's horrible to say, I'm really sorry, but you, you're going to have to stop. But we have a duty of care to them, and we must, must allow that to happen. Um, I did get asked by Jeff earlier to, to talk about uh, risk assessment. So although it would be an informal risk assessment, when we look at our next student or when we look at those students on the course, we're always doing a risk assessment with them all, all times. So we're saying, oh, can you get your legs up? Mm, not sure. Um, what can we do about that? So let's look at a risk assessment of a tandem student. So Neil, if you can tell us what you do at Wild Geese. I know what you do, but if you could explain it. I don't know if it's on actually, so yeah. He's a train driver, he can sort that out. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, init they initially get weighed at the start, and then once they get their briefing, they all have to demonstrate that they can lift their legs, that they can get in the arch position, uh, and the free fall position, and then they're put into a suspended harness to demonstrate that they can lift their legs. And they're told throughout, if they can't, at this stage, if they cannot lift their legs, they don't get on the aircraft. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So at, at Wild Geese, they have two suspending harnesses, which are uh, in a place where the students can go to. It's not too public, is it? So that they can do it. And they, for everybody who jumps, um, they go on those suspending harnesses. Now, at the moment, you're only working with a 206, or you have been. So it's fairly easy to be able to do that with everybody. Um, what about at Go Skydive Ram when you were there? What uh, what was the procedure there? Because I know you have that sort of thing as well, don't you? Yeah, similar thing. So they go and do it. They go and do an induction where someone would show them videos, um, yeah. talk them through what's going to happen, give them an expectation of what's going to happen, uh, and then they go through the track. They get um, kitted up. Um, they go through for training. So we immediately put them in a suspended harness. So uh, you could have nine nine of them. Is that with everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then th the instructor would then take them through the whole training in the suspended harness, practicing the right. uh, free fall body position, landing position, everything suspended. Um, and we found it was a, a massive help, really. Yeah. yeah. And and you dealt with big numbers there, so yep. you know. Yeah, absolutely. I know at Chatteris we have um, you know the private room where we take people. Does that still happen, Kev? Suspend yeah. them in there. That works quite well. Yeah. Uh, no. Use the fatometer, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool, all right. Anybody do anything different than that? Suspending harnesses or any other way of doing it? We don't do harnesses. Don't do any harnesses at all? No. So, so you can't really test them if you haven't got a harness? We put them in the chair. In the chair, yeah. Hand on the shoulder. Yeah. Permission. Knees up. Stand yeah. by. Okay. Good, but you have a method of being able to do it, so that's your method, yeah, yeah. If, if there's a problem, yeah. you can put them on the harness. Yeah, because obviously the, one of the problems with the chair, if you're not holding them from behind, is that they can slip back and then they find it easy to get the legs up, but it's very important, yeah. And the, and the other thing about it is if you've seen them do it in suspended harness or on the chair or however you do it, then if there is a court case later on, yeah. then you've got proof that you did it, you know, because you can say, no, we put them in there and they did that, um, they demonstrated they could do it. So when they subsequently were injured, they'd already demonstrated us. So we had no reason to think that they couldn't get them up. So it covers us as well. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Good. Can I have uh, back on? Thank you very much. So that's our elephant in the room. A anything else to add on, on that, guys? Anything, anybody like to ask any questions or anything else on professional judgment? But at the end of the day, sorry, to boy. <laughs> um, you can't let it go, you know. You will at some point, as an instructor, be involved with professional judgment. So it's important that you think about it and what your response is going to be when that person comes in that you don't really want to jump with. Okay, cool. Right, just to summarise then, uh, we are professionals. We've discussed that. We are professionals. We get paid for what we do. We should look and act accordingly, as Steve said. And we should continue to learn and develop at all times. So think about what you're going to do next. Am I going to do a different skill? Can I perfect how I work at the moment? Can I perfect my craft? And lastly, 
use good professional judgment at all times. Okay, so that's, that's me done. Thank you very much. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for that, Ro. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Cheers, Flo. Thank you.